and today is February 3rd. Also, FYI, if you're going to watch the Last Word podcast, it is tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Eastern time on this YouTube channel right here on my one. But we have the TWAB. We know it's like 6,000 words. I'm going to go through it because this is a blind reading. We're doing this live on Twitch. So let's find out together and see what happens. Obviously, the big news is Bungie joined Sony Interactive. That isn't even currently fixed right now. Uh, but basically, if you haven't seen that news, I would kind of be surprised if you've been playing Destiny. Destiny 2 will stay multi-platform and potentially expand to new platforms. I don't know what that would be unless it's like Amazon Luna or something. Um, they're going to maintain full creative, creative control and publishing independence of the Destiny universe. They also said future games in their little FAQ are also going to be multi-platform. Now, that could just be PC and PlayStation if they have a brand new IP, maybe. But Destiny 2 through the light and dark saga so and through 2024 should be the same experience on xbox playstation and pc i personally don't think they're i would say literally stupid enough i don't think they're stupid enough to do things like a playstation exclusive strike personally i could be wrong and i could eat those words but i don't think they're dumb enough to go back down that road and if they are they are going to get a lot of crap for it so same game everywhere every player should have an amazing destiny experience no matter where you choose to play and that's the big thing. Some people, the first comments I saw when I posted this up on the YouTube channel previously were like, oh, we're getting the strike exclusive, uh, PlayStation exclusive strikes and exotics. And stuff. they did that before. It was not a, not a, a good time. And I think they've heard the feedback. I don't think they're going to do it again, personally. So uh, in the realm of Destiny 2, we don't expect you to notice much of a change in your day-to-day -day adventures as a guardian. We aren't going to make Destiny 2 platform exclusive. We're committed to a Destiny that you can play on your platform of choice, and that has the same great experience regardless of what device you're using. We're going to continue to develop using amazing new worlds and for multiple platforms, and we're more than excited about what potential unlocks for us. If you haven't read the FAQ, do it. They answer all those questions. So basically, is your experience in Destiny 2 going to change? No. So with that said, what else is going on? Uh, they have 1 million pre-orders. Servers are going to suck on February 22nd. There's just no question about it. It's going to be some downtime before. Servers are going to come back up. A million people are going to hit the servers. They're probably going to crash. If you get in, you're lucky. If you don't get in, take a nap and then try again because you're going to have 10 days before the raid. I'm going to try because you guys know I will be live streaming that day. But if it's just, if it looks awful, I... Like, I'm debating almost starting like an hour or two late just to let that stuff work out. Either way, 1 million is awesome. Means Witch Queen does have some hype behind it, but servers are absolutely going to get a beating that day. So just be ready for it. Uh, we also had some a gear trailer go out. If you haven't seen this one, we've got exotic glaives for each of the classes. The Titan one shoots a bubble. The, the Warlock one is a healing turret, basically. The Hunter one is the, oh, like the wave across the ground of arc energy into chain lightning. We've got a slug missile launcher, possible ADS versus auto fire difference. We've got a worm launcher. Uh, we've got a chest that allows you to make a giant stasis wall instead of a barricade. You've got a warlock gauntlet, which will have two cold snap grenades that you can have back to back. So that with enhanced tracking. So good luck getting away from those in PVP. And then you've also got a hunter boost to reflection so basically if you reflect damage as the rotating staff it's going to be much more powerful i think that's most everything from the trailer they also briefly touch on weapon crafting which is what most of today is supposed to be about you may have noticed there is a quick little glimpse into weapon crafting at the top of the video well let's take a moment to walk through it no not just the video but crafting as a feature after we'll follow the twab tradition of digging into the nitty-gritty so this is the important stuff Savathun is building an army of hive. These aren't just ordinary hive, mind you. They've become the Lucent Brood. How could this happen? What will the Vanguard do as we begin to question the line between light and dark? As you begin to unravel the mystery between the battle of the Witch Queen's Brood, you'll discover the Enclave. This will be your destination for weapon crafting. Crafting a legendary weapon from scratch isn't a simple matter. Finding patterns, think weapon blueprints, collecting materials, and building your weapon is the starting point. After crafting your tool of destruction, you'll begin to unlock its full potential through combat, which we all have speculation, but we will see. Early in the Witch Queen campaign, you'll be giving, given an introductory quest that runs you through the ins and outs of crafting. In the first and second missions of the Witch Queen, free to all players, Guardians will uncover the deep sight ability and be introduced to the Enclave. Again, something missing here. Don't know what it is. This is where you'll begin to shape your first glaive, a 
a brand new weapon archetype being introduced in the Witch Queen. All of the necessary materials will be provided for you to craft your first weapon. But you'll also be given a short tutorial on how to find those materials for feature crafting. A subset of weapons and archetypes will be craftable from the start, but more will be added in the future. And what they said a long time ago with regards to weapon crafting, it's mostly going to be Witch Queen and Season 16, which are launching together. And those are going to be the ones that are going to have weapon crafting options, it sounds like. Anything that we've got right now, anything that may come in the future, they'll kind of build out weapon crafting and older and newer as we go. But don't picture like weapon crafting will start and you're going to go be able to craft an IS Luna. Not going to happen from the get-go. In order to shape your future tools of destruction, you'll need to do a little bit of research first. Patterns are your first requirement. Some will be acquired through quest completions, while others can be earned by completing various gameplay objectives. Once you've earned your desired pattern, it can be crafted at any time with the required materials. Now let's talk about the mixing. Oh, okay. Shaped weapon. Come to pass auto rifle. Solar primary weapon. Always be mindful of the repeat offender. So you've got impact, range, stability, handling, reload speed, rounds per mag, rounds per minute, magazine, all your basic weapon stats. It's solar. You can see 1550 power. They're just going, they're maxing it out because we're starting. What are we starting at? We're starting at 1350. Pinnacle, I think, is going to be 1560. If I remember correctly, I think that's right because it's 1350. Soft cap is 1500. Hard cap is 1550. Pinnacle will be 1560. Okay. Um, so this is like the basic loadout. So you got Wellspring, Genesis, Drop Mag. I forget that one specifically. I don't know what that little purple icon is, unless that might be the blueprint, for example. And then that's how you're going to get your weapon. After reaching the Enclave and crafting your first glaive, randomly, randomly rolled weapons throughout the game have a chance to drop with a new ability, Deep Sight Resonance. This will be used as you begin to target specific traits to craft. As an example, if you find a Deep Sight Resonance Legendary Auto Rifle with the Rampage perk, you can complete an objective and extract the essence of the perk to then craft a weapon with Rampage or another. Okay, so Deep Sight Resonance, you're going to be looking for that on basically every weapon you see. If you see one with that, you're going to want to save it because then you're going to, do, to use... Uh, the deep sight, the, that auto rifle, you can complete an objective and you can basically pull the rampage perk out of it to theoretically, hopefully be able to use it. I'm hoping if you do it once, you can use that perk generally. Doesn't seem too bad though. And that, oh, that's the purple icon. Okay. Uh, pictured a guardian holding deep sight resonance weaponry is noted by the, do I need to just refresh this thing? Hold on. Yeah, so some of the pictures are starting to come in. So what did we miss? Anything important? Not really. Okay, so we've got got little red ones around them. Maybe those are crafted weapons. We also get to see the new artifact. That looks like a new ghost. Nothing really changing over here. The ghost is kind of cool. Okay, so... You're going to have... So there's Deep Sight Resonance. Oh, that's a part. Wait. This weapon possesses a reasonable, a resonance detectable by your deep sight ability. Use this weapon in combat to complete activities in order to attune the resonance and extract materials useful for shaping weapons. Okay, so. Hold on. You see behind that, it's got multiple perks like over here. What is going on? So you got your normal perk tier. I'll zoom in on this one. Yeah, hopefully this is... I don't know if this is going to be a consumable, if it's something you equip. I don't know what these two are. But it also looks like you've got a perk here, a perk here. I don't know quite what that does. I can't see it and they won't show it. Are they ever going to show... Hold on, I want to see if they show a picture. Nope. Way to hide the fun stuff. Use this weapon in combat in order to complete activities, in order to attune this... Attune to this resonance and extract materials useful for shaping weapons. So I wonder if you have to use this weapon with, say, headstone on it to pull out headstone. Yeah, six perks seems weird. Oh, that might be a masterwork, actually. This looks like a masterwork because you've got that one. What's the fifth column? I can't tell. What's this other one show? Is it just masterwork? 
This looks like Masterwork because you see like the Crucible version. I forget what that is because that one, there's like one extra column. So when it's completed, all right, let's read because I'm speculating too much. A guardian holding deep sight resonance weaponry noted by the red borders. You see red borders, hold on to them. They're going to be crucial. A deep sight resonance weapon with no progress, essence ready to be attuned through combat. A deep sight resonance weapon with full progress, essence ready to be extracted. Like current weapons, not every weapon pattern will be compatible with every trait. But you'll have a good list of traits to mix and match as you customize a given weapon to your desired specifications. It doesn't stop there though. Through the Enclave, you'll be able to kick things up a notch and enhance your traits to strengthen their flavor. Leveling your weapon and enhanced traits. Once a weapon is crafted, Guardians may begin to increase its level by using it in activities and by defeating enemies. This is where the bulk of your crafting playtime will be. The more you use a weapon, the faster you'll unlock its potential. Okay. You can actually pick the frame. Man, talk about shifting the metas and then just changing your frame. Uh, enhanced stats and traits can be unlocked when reaching higher levels, granting the slight bonuses to your weapon capabilities. Our goal through the system is to give players a reason to invest in their weapons far beyond what Masterworking could offer in the past. And they basically made Masterworking mostly useless because it's no longer going to create orbs. So now actually playing with your weapon, putting time into it is actually going to make the stats potentially better. Each weapon can now act as a long tail pursuit as you look to make your freshly crafted weapon the best it can be. So we've got enhanced intrinsic, slow firing and high damage so you can just pick your frame it looks like. This weapon will earn an additional minor stat boost at level 20. Good to know. So that's going to boost to handling. Okay. It can be... It can be intimidating to start making decisions on how to build your weapons, so we are also giving you the ability to reshape your crafted weapons in the Enclave if you ever want to mix up the components of your weapons after you finish crafting them. You can switch up what barrel, mags, traits you choose, so don't feel like you got locked down one path forever. Thank God. Because, yeah, like, you want to be able to experiment with this stuff, and hopefully, like, if it takes, hopefully, nothing too crazy. There's the Resonance Alloy. So you need a certain amount of that. It may cost something to switch it up, but at least if you can eventually switch over, should be good. Uh, it can be immediate. It, uh, let's see. So you got shape and then reshape. So you're going to make a weapon or modify a weapon. As Guardians begin to embrace this new system, you'll begin to see new legends rise. Some will prefer Hake and other foundries. Others may dabble with new weapons from Redacted. We're excited to see which weapons you embrace. Mementos. While the majority of the crafting, crafting experience will be dedicated to mixing, matching, and enhancing traits, there is also an opportunity for a bit of customization when it comes to the appearance and activity-specific trackers. Uh, at launch, one weapon memento will become available to players to earn through Gambit, unlocking a Gambit-themed appearance and tracker. Rank up your weapon to max level, head back to the Enclave and apply freshly earned memento for some sweet flair. More of these will come through Trials of Osiris and Grandmaster Nightfalls. They're going to give you a reason to play Gambit, but Gambit's getting an upgrade, so I guess they're making that the first one. Trials of Osiris won't happen until after the raid. Grandmasters are like six weeks later, so those will be much later. We have more plans for, me me uh, for mementos down the line and are excited to introduce a new in-game rarity cosmetic item for players to chase as they build their new arsenal. In-game things to get by playing, that I support. What it is, I have no idea, but anything that you can work for in the end game that's going to be a cosmetic thing to show that you put some time in, that I'm okay with. Exotic crafting. Legendary weapons aren't the only things you'll be able to craft. The upcoming Osteostriga exotic SMG and the three class unique exotic glaives can, be found, can also be crafted through the Enclave once you find their respective patterns, of course. While legendary weapons can be crafted from the group up, Exotic crafting is more about fine-tuning something with a defined identity. You may have the opportunity to customize things like barrels or stocks while preserving the exotic look and feel. Uh, looking for a longer range profile for the weapon or opting to shred through your enemies up close and personal? Through the Enclave, you can do just so. So it looks like the exotics that you're going to have are going to have minor tweaks, not major ones, but they won't totally be locked. So if you can craft an exotic, the main functionality of this exotic is probably going to stay. But maybe it's going to have a little more here or a little more there. Probably the minor tweaks, like the first two, like the barrels, like the scopes, things like that. 
Uh, all right, we're at the end of our weapon crafting preview. Will you have questions? Undoubtedly, launch day at the uh, launch day of Witch Queen is just around the corner, and we're excited to see what weapons you'll create. Don't worry, we aren't done with the twab just yet. We still have some exciting news regarding weapons to cover. Let's talk tuning. Oh dear, this is gonna be interesting. Um, crafting is gonna introduce an entirely new way to invest in the weapon. Uh, when hunting for your new favorites, it's not just about the looks, but about the feels. Weapon feature lead Chris Proctor, who, by the way, Chris Proctor is going to be on the uh, Massive Breakdown podcast with Mercules. We had him on the show before. Uh, is on deck to walk through some changes to coming weapons, perks, and archetypes with the Witch Queen. The team has been hard at work over the last few months to bring this to life, and we've got a lot to cover. If you're new to the Destiny sandbox or aren't too deep in the terminology of the know-how, this can be a lot to process at first glance, and while we know a few of our sandbox-minded community members will break this down through YouTube videos and write-ups, there's no shame in skimming this. Sandbox is about the feel, and you'll be getting hands on these changes with the Witch Queen launches. If you're brave enough to take on the challenge of reading this in full, take it slow, grab some water, maybe a snack as well. Let me wet my whistle there. All right, let's go. From Pinnacle to Pursuit Weapons. You know, this is actually something I didn't expect them to talk about. When Pinnacle Weapons were introduced, they were tuned and presented as being best in class weapons to act as rewards for players dedicated to a particular activity. Uh, they excited and motivate players, but they were expensive to build for legendary weapons and had some undesirable side effects such as PvP pinnacle weapons becoming mandatory in PvE, recluse, mountaintop. Yes, those kind of broke some things. Or becoming incredibly unpleasant to play against or so strong that no other weapons in class could compete in PvP. Mountaintop, not forgotten. I mean, yeah, revoker, recluse, all of those seem to piss a lot of people off. When we moved away from pinnacle weapons, we didn't go into much detail, so we'd like to take a moment to clarify the move and also introduce pursuit weapons for the next season. The pursuit weapon for the next season. The intent as of season 12 is that a pursuit weapon should be a solid weapon, roughly 70% of a god roll in its archetype, with perk options that would work well in PvP and PvE. And that sounds about right from what we've seen so far. Uh, and which can be reliably attained without a huge grind. Also true. It gives one person a way to go get like the Ascendancy Rocket Launcher, which is decent, Maybe not the perfect god roll, but a solid roll if you put a little bit of time in. These should act as a good starter weapon for both PvE and PvE, while leaving space for weapons from pinnacle activities like Trials, Raids, Nightfalls. We generally ship a similar weapon with higher potential in the same season. Note, Salvager Salvo basically ignores this guideline, but we really wanted to put Chain Reaction on a special ammo weapon. I love Salvager Salvo, so please don't get rid of that. But don't currently see that as a reason to touch it. Chain Reaction is going to be a rare on special weapons, though. That's fine. Salvagers is still damn good, though. Here's a quick breakdown of how each Pursuit weapon since Season 12 compares to the randomly rolled options in the game. Adored is a good sniper rifle, but better sniper rifles shift along with it or since. Salvagers Breach is a great room-clearing weapon, but doesn't have the utility of, bi of blinding grenades or auto-loading holsters, so other legendary grenade launchers such as Truth Teller or Ignition Code often take its place. Null Composure is an excellent fusion rifle. I used it probably too much, but I enjoyed it. Um... And brought back the Reservoir Burst per perk, but Plug 1 and Glacial Chasm can get Reservoir Burst, and Cartesian Coordinate has better options for DPS. The Ascendancy Rocket Launcher brought back Explosive Light, but Hothead can get this and has other good perk combinations. And we're getting a Shotgun, huh? Alright. Well, PvP is going to be Shotgun Heavy, in case it wasn't already. And with that, let's look at the Reckless Endangerment Pursuit Shotgun. This weapon is coming in Season 16 and introduces the new Steady Hands perk, for a massive handling boost after a kill, plus snapshot. There are several other shotguns in the release. It looks still like a slug, or it looks like a pellet spread, not a slug. So you got handling and snapshot. Interesting. Um, there are several other shotguns in release with more sought after PV and PVP perks. Shocking. Origin traits. We've been talking about the difficulty of making different weapons of the same type feel unique for years. And at this point in the Witch Queen, we're doing something about it. Every weapon that's new or returning in Witch Queen will have an origin trait determined by its source in the third trait column, including all new legendary weapons and all new... Is this the extra perk situation? We have no picture, but those look cool. So every weapon that's new or returning in Witch Queen will have an origin trait determined by its trait in the third trait column. So that's like... So you have the masterwork as the sixth column. The fifth column must be this origin trait. Introducing all new legendary weapons and all returning 
including all new legendary weapons and all returning trials, Iron Banner, and Nightfall weapons. Origin traits will only appear on new drops of a weapon. They won't be retroactively added to old drops. Remember all that old stuff you have? More of it can probably go bye-bye. More reason to clean out your vault. Pot, kettle, black, believe me, I know. Um, these traits vary in effect, but the guideline is that either they have a high uptime or medium power effects or low uptime and high power. There are 14 origin traits in total shipping with the Witch Queen, and we expect to ship around three new ones each season after season 16. For example, one in season 17, one for the raid or dungeon, and one for the seasonal event until we have one for each event. When we refresh old weapons from a given source, for example, an existing raid or pool of seasonal weapons, we may create a new origin trait at the same time. This is interesting. Trials of Osiris. Alacrity, if I'm saying that right. I probably got it wrong, but I don't know how else I would say that. So Alacrity. Gain increased reload, stability, aim assist, and range when you are the last living member of your fire team. Well, it sounds like Celerity. Plus 20 reload solo includes solo lost sectors and rumble. Now that is actually rare that I actually do the solo for anything PVE related because I run solo all the time. So if you actually put a little time in trials, that solo weapon would theoretically benefit you more in lost sector farming. Nightfall strikes. Stunning recovery. Stunning a champion partially refills your magazine. That alone is not bad. Triggers health regeneration. Always good in Nightfalls because they suck at higher difficulties. And improves recovery for a short duration. Grant 60 health and plus 40 recovery for 3 seconds. That's... That I like. That is actually very good and probably will be something very sought after. If it drops from normal Nightfalls, people are going to be farming the ever-loving crap out of Nightfalls. Probably before the raid. Because if you can stun a champion in the raid and there are champions in the new raid, getting health back when you do that could be very good. Crucible. One quiet moment. Grants increased reload speed when out of combat. Wonder how long it takes. Plus 40 reload stat when out of combat. Haven't dealt or received damage for four seconds. See, good to know. Uh, so if you get out of combat for four seconds, you're running across the map, give it a little bit, your reload's going to be nice and snappy. Uh, strike. So regular strikes versus nightfalls. This is, and again, it's going to be that whole Vanguard Ops playlist, I would imagine, is where this is. Vanguard's Vindication. Final blows with this weapon grant a small amount of health. Small equals 7 health. Just for reference, you have about 200. Uh, what is it, like 185 to 203, depending on your resilience. But yeah, you have anywhere probably around 190 most of the time. So if you get a final blow, it's not a bunch, but regular strikes, not a big deal. Nightfalls is much, much better for sure. Strikes will help you get started. Nightfall strikes will be better in the long run. Anytime it makes sense, due to the score source activity, a weapon will have multiple origin titles. What? Nightfall weapons can select between Nightfall and Vanguard. Oh god, that's going to make it harder. The Nightfall is the one you want, yet you can get Vanguard. Trials of Osiris can be between Trials and Crucible. The Pursuit weapon can select between Gambit, Vanguard, and Crucible traits, since it can be acquired from all of those. Yeah, that Pursuit weapon is going to be interesting to at least see all the options. That's actually going to be a very early grind. One other case, see below. Weapon Foundries. Guardian, there was something I wanted to tell you. What was it? Banshee scratches his forehead. Oh yeah, guns. I was cleaning out that locker back there. Banshee motions to the Duck's Cake storage container. Found a couple things you might be interested in. The XO reaches into the crate next to him and pulls out a glistening Fuji? Fugu? Somebody laugh at my pronunciation because that's epic. F-U-G-U-E 55 sniper rifle. Fugui. I'm going to go with just the worst pronunciation possible. <laughs> a stack of shiny new Soros weapons manufactured by the Red War looks by the looks of them. He peers down the sights of the rifle. Been years since I held a new Soros. Good balance, solid craftsmanship. This is damn fine work. Banshee stares wistfully, seemingly seeming to forget you're there. His eyes snap back to you. What was I going to tell you? Ah, right. Guns. Banshee uncrates more weapons in mint condition. These were earmarked for Zavala, Drifter, and Chex. Maybe if you're lucky, they'll let you play with them. There's a lot more where that came from. Banshee gestures with a whole stack of crates swimming around a cloud of dust. Hand cannons, pulse rifles, Amalan, Hake, Vice, you're going to have a ball. In Season 16, we're replacing the old world loot pool with 12 new weapons in the style of... Destiny 2 Year 1 Foundry Weapon Sets. Three weapons from Suros, Amalan, Hake, and Vice Foundries, plus one Foundry Weapon for each Vanguard 
Gambit, and Crucible. So you got three from Suros, three from Amalon, three from Hockey, and three from Vice. That's already 12 new weapons. And then plus one Foundry weapon for each Vanguard. So you got three Vanguards, one Suros, one Amalon, one Hockey, and Vice. So your grind after these weapons is not going to be quite as terrible as it was, which is a good thing because it's a smaller pool. The perks may be like a mile long that you got to pick from, but it is going to be theoretically a smaller pool. What this also means, if there's things in the smaller, the loot pool that you want right now, like, I don't know, anything in the world loot pool, dire promise, main ingredient, there's a big list of stuff in there. I don't know how we're going to get that stuff. It may just be a little hard to come by or specific activities. I don't know. Uh, each weapon will come with a foundry origin trait themed around the foundry's personality. Suros. Reloading grants this weapon bonus handling and reduces incoming flinch for a short time. Plus 40 handling, plus 20% flinch resistance for 6 seconds after reloading. Interesting. Hake. Hake Breach Armaments. This weapon deals increased damage against vehicles, turrets, barricades, and stasis crystals. Turrets include stasis turrets, plus 15% to vehicles. We don't do a lot with vehicles, so for the couple of Cabal tanks in the entire game, there you go. And plus 30% to structures and turrets. Unless this is like some implication of other things in the game that are coming, there's not a whole lot of stuff that we're shooting in turrets right now and structures, so Hake is kind of opening up the idea that there's going to be some other stuff going on. Amalon Fluid Dynamics. This weapon has increased reload speed and stability for the top half of the... What? That's backwards, even though... Okay. Stability, max plus 20. Reload, max plus 30. Reduces as the magazine gets lower. So if you fire like two bullets and reload, you get them back quicker. Stability at the top of the mag to start, though, is actually pretty good. Uh, Vice Stinger. Chance on damage to partially refill this weapon's magazine. So kind of a... A chance at a bit of subsistence. I don't even know what chat is saying. I'm glad you guys made fun of me for my mispronunciation. We'll kind of get to a review at the end. In addition to Foundry Origin Trait, each Foundry, wep foundry Weapons perk pools lean into that Foundry's identity. Big damage for Hake, consistency for Suros, ability tie-ins, and weird stuff for Amalon. Never stop firing for Vice. That actually makes sense. Uh, upcoming Vanguard Shotgun, Crucible Hand Cannon, which I forget that style, but I think it, I think it's kind of like the Hockey. The uh, Gambit Auto Rifle, that's Hockey for sure. Foundry weapons that drop from a source, aside from the World Loot Pool, can switch between Foundry trait and that source's trait. That simply doesn't imply that Foundry weapons will be common out. Uh, this simply, this doesn't imply that Foundry weapons will be common outside of the World Loot Pool. For example, a roll on a new Gambit Hockey High Impact Auto Rifle, picture the green guy, might look like this. Corkscrew Rifling, Polygonal Rifling, Armor Piercing Rounds, Flared Magwell, Perpetual Motion, Focus Fire. What is Focus Fire? Is that a new perk? Focus that far down. Focus Fire, Dusty 2 perk. Is that a thing? That's a catalyst. That seems like a new perk. Invader Tracker, Gambit Origin Trait. Really? What are you going to like? If you hit an invader, you can actually mark them and tag them. Hockey Breach Armaments, Hockey Origin Trait. Kill Tracker, see below, Range Masterwork. That's got to be new. Not entirely sure what that is, but that seems new. We know I haven't brought back all of your favorite foundry weapon types, but don't worry. You can expect to see weapon foundries receive new additions each season for the year following the Witch Queen, with some fun surprises thrown in later in the year. Global. All right, this is where some of the fun begins. The rest of the section will be more of a patch notes preview feel. Lots of bullets, not a lot of pictures. Still have have that snack and water handy. Feel free to take a moment and get a refill. Kill trackers were once a re were one reason to masterwork a weapon, but now we see the re there see no reason to gate these behind masterworking. They'll be present on default on all weapons that shipped in Forsaken and later. So if it's basically anything you probably still have that functions that hasn't been sunset. Because that's most of everything. Yes, that means masterworking should no longer be seen as mandatory. And we expect the plus 10 to a weapon stat to only matter to dedicated PvP players. Pretty much. That's why I'm wondering what the hell I'm going to do with all those cores. 
Uh, we have no specific plans for changes to master working at this stage, but we will res they will revisit it later. Note that we discussed gating the origin trait behind master working, but ultimately this wouldn't have achieved the goal of weapon differentiation for non master worked weapons. I kind of appreciate that they didn't do that. But right now, literally, weapon master working, it doesn't do much because orbs are going to be generated through the mod um, that's going to go in the helmet. And then kill tracking is going to be intrinsic to everything. You've got the origin traits, which are going to be selectable depending on where you get it from, one or two. So if you want that little bit of a stat boost, you can. But if you don't have that many enhancement cores, you're not going to need to spend all of those. Also, potentially more enhancement cores can go in armor than weapons. But yeah, master working at this point, not a big bonus. Just just a smidge. Yeah, pretty much no purpose in <laughs> master working except like minor stat changes. And plus 10 to stability in PvE is not going to like win you a Grandmaster Nightfall. Just not going to do it. Following the armored team's footstep, weapon mods for legendary weapons are now free to insert in an instant. Good. All mods should basically be free. I didn't know they weren't free for weapons. I guess I just didn't think about it. We believe that many pain points around special weapons and Crucible are exacerbated by how easily it is currently to acquire special ammo. Oh dear. While we've touched this in the past, we're making a further adjustment. Players now only drop one special ammo on death or equivalent, no matter how much they were carrying, as long as they weren't completely empty. The maximum you can pick up off a special brick is one for a shotgun, fusion, or sniper, or equivalent of other weapons. Scavenger mods add to this as normal, but we'll be evaluating their place in Crucible in the future. Players quickly found another way to execute the quip swap glitch, so we fixed another animation cancel. Gotcha. Yeah, no worry about Glimmer mods. Uh, PvP is going to be much more limited on bricks. Um, one, if you're not running Scavenger. Scavenger is still going to be important, it seems, for PvP, because that's like the main place to use it. So instead of getting one, you might get two, but you probably won't get like seven from two bricks or something. Uh, it will be limited. I guess we'll see if it matters too much. It depends on how much you leave in PvP. One second. There's actually a lot of words, and I'm halfway down the page. Man, I hope they have a lot of pictures in the end. How long is this? We're already at 32 minutes, dear God. Season 15 Fusion Rifle Rework had a lot of moving parts. Rapid fire, precision, and adaptive. Fusion came, fusions came out of this different, but all quite strong. But high impact fusions are hurting. Yep, <laughs> they suck. Iota Dracona is just painful to use. We've definitely seen all fusion subfamilies occupy different roles, and we want to maintain the large differences in change in charge time to keep these di three these distinct now. So we're nudging the damage up to make it easier for these to land kills at range in PvP, and we're bumping the PvE damage scaler. That said, we'll keep an eye on it. Increased high impact fusion rifle damage bolt from 62 to 64. This doesn't seem like a lot, but it allows more rolls to cross bolts to cross bolts to kill threshold. Because in theory, if you get 64, well, here's why. 64, if you can hit three, you can do 192 damage with three bolts if you get up to 64. You can kill probably half of the Guardians, depending on how much resilience they're running in PvP, with three bolts. Three. So if you're in that range and that thing's actually got it, that's not, that's, that's a chunk. Increased high impact fusion rifle damage bonus from 15 to 20%. I wish that was like 25 because it is so slow, but I guess we'll see. <coughs> Three bolts in PVP though. That's, that'll be interesting. I don't know if you'll ever be able to get it down to two. I'm sure they have it tweaked that way for a reason, but three is still spicy. We like the crowd control capabilities of breach load grenade launch in, in PvE have taken off, but as it stands, there isn't a meaningful trade-off for the added utility that blinding or concussion grenades give, and it's unreasonable that a way to really annoy other players in PvP can also one-shot them. Reduce blinding and concussion grenade damage by 25%. So you won't be able to blind or uh, concuss people in PvP? Oh, yeah. Blinding and Concussion Grenade will go damage will go down. Functionality is there, just hits a little weaker. Mostly that's for PvP, though. I wish this said doesn't affect PvE, but I'm guessing that won't do that. 
Rocket launcher subfamilies have lacked meaningful difference for a while now, and their free tracking precisions are flat out better. So we're pushing them farther apart by adjusting damage. We may take a deeper look at ro rocket launchers. Remember when everybody speculates that rocket launchers potentially are going to have a mod on the artifact because they're kind of getting all these tweaks and we just got ascendancy? This is another reason. If they think rocket launchers are going to be used, they're going to mess with them. Precision is the free tracking one, so that's 0.95x. High impact is 1. Adaptive is 1.05. Aggressive was 1.05. I don't know why aggressive isn't 1.10, but who knows. We took a big swing at sniper rifle aim assist based on zoom and beyond light, and have been seeing this play out, revisiting the tuning and zoom-based um, aim assist scaling. This is a whole lot of technical jargon, so some of you guys may have tuned out by now. Low zoom snipers got more of an aim assist reduction than they needed, and high, high zoom snipers are getting some pretty silly headshots right now. Reduced variance in aim assist scaling between low and high zoom. That's just, yeah. Cone angle scaler increased by 25% on low zoom, reduced by 9% on high zoom. Pulse rifles take slightly too long to kill red bar enemies in PvE. Here we go. We're buffing their damage versus miners by 10%. But if you want exotic pulse rifles to feel better at this, oh boy, keep reading. Okay. I think I'm excited to pull out something like a Graviton Lance here. Exotic primary weapons and trace rifles aren't sufficiently stronger than legendaries for them to be worth bringing into hard PvE content. Holy crap. Uh, particularly against miners. Note that this change applies to all exotics that use primary ammo. Fighting Lion actually counts here, by the way. Don't forget that. Um, and includes most secondary effects. Example, perk triggered explosives. Hmm. Like Firefly, for example. Increased damage versus miners in PvE by 40%. Ace of Spades just got really spicy. Chaperone is a terror in PvP, particularly by the with the nerf to pellet shotguns and the reduced frequency of grenade and melee abilities, and it outperforms some weapons that ought to be good counters for it. For example, sidearms and submachine guns. Reduce the passive range buff from 2 meters to 0.5 meters. So it's a little shorter. It still hits at like 20 meters, which feels crazy. Um, but yeah. Duality is in a similar place to Chaperone, but it's not quite as rangy. On the other hand, it's exotic trait shipped with the constraint that it would wipe on reload to make it harder to chain. Having seen it in action for a while now, we didn't think that limitation needs to be there. Reduce passive range buff in slug mode from 1.25 to 0.5 meters, pellets unaffected. The A, the on black wings damage buff no longer clears on reload. That's I don't use duality that much, so honestly forget what that does. But again, having something not clear on reload, that's generally a good thing. Teraba is extremely strong as is, but it currently demands complete commitment with no weapon switching. This constraint is a bit harsher. This is something people have been asking for. So I have 235 spoils. I might honestly just go by Teraba if this is good. This constraint is a bit harsher than it needs to be, so we've loosened it without removing it entirely. Also, while the duration extension, while the duration extension when damaging players did actually function in PvP, it was so subtle that the players kept reporting it was bugged, so we bumped it up. So now it reduces the perk progress by half instead of clearing it on weapon stow. I wish it would just like not clear on PvE. Just leave it there. Increase ravenous beast duration increases for, for damaging a player slightly. So it's not all the way there, but you don't lose it all if you switch, which is beneficial, but still. Ruinous Effigy. Yeah, this thing got nerfed in the ground for no reason. Uh, that has been overdue for a look at its Beyond Light nerf. The nerf to damage dealt while guarding. So we're rolling that back. Note the other part of that nerf was to airborne standard melee attack, and that hasn't been touched. Increase the damage dealt by guarding with a transmutation sphere by 66%. It got just nerfed into the ground and C-sharp with the tier 1 sub. Thank you very much. We'll hype in chat, guys. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, follow my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash ebontis, so you can see me play Destiny or a whole bunch of other stuff. Transmutation Sphere multi-kills now count for orb generation armor mods. Previously, only kills with the beam would trigger this. That's actually good because orbs are going to be hard to come by. They're doing a lot of exotics here, apparently. Luminous stats just don't compare it with other 140 adaptive hand cannons, and its usage reflects that, so we're updating these alongside, of, alongside some of the legendary hand cannons that also used to be 150. 
Increase the range stat from 44 to 59. Nice. Increase the stability from 46 to 56. Sorry, Thorn fans. Thorn is already strong and popular, and a similar buff would turn it into a monster. That's probably fair. Holy... Okay, well, this is a, this is going on YouTube, but I got to shout out C-Sharp821 for the 25 gifted subs. I know this is in the middle of a YouTube video, but I don't really care because that's huge. So, holy crap, thank you. Spam those emotes. And if you guys are watching this on on YouTube, find me on Twitch. It's pretty fun over there. Um, C-Sharp, thank you so much. That is kind of crazy. Thank you so much. Wow. Okay. I've been thrown off the video a little bit, but we are back. Agar Scepter initial. First time chat from that same person. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um. Anyway, I have to recover and continue this video recording because this is already long. We're at 40 minutes. You guys watching this on YouTube, you guys are the real MVPs. Um, Agar Scepter. Agar Scepter initial implementation used super regeneration scalers, which had very weird effects on activities, but also had scalers. So we've rebuilt it to turn off regeneration while active and have implemented a slower drain using a different method. Uh, let's see. Fixed being able fixed being able to activate or continue using empowered mode while suppressed or stasis encased. Rebuilt the perk used to modify super recharge rate. Now freezes super recharge and deducts super directly. Fixing several issues with activities that change supercharge rate and outliers. Super should now drain more slowly while empowered. Agro Scepter is already pretty powerful in the damage that you get from that. If it's even more, should, if it's going to last longer and they didn't mess with the damage, Agro Scepter is powerful and great for ad clear. I promise you, Agro Scepter is something you do not want to sleep on. If you don't have it, go do the quests and the catalyst. Get that thing. It's too damn good. Dead Man's Tale feels good to use on both mouse and keyboard and controller, and we don't want it to go back to feeling unreliable, but it's far too good at spamming hip fire shots at long range. Reduce the size of the catalyst's hip fire rate of fire from 150 to 130. So it's a little slower, but that's it. Apparently it'll still tag you just a little farther away. Seriously, though. Damn, thank you. Uh, Forerunner. Oh, no, Lawrence Driver first. Lawrence and Arbalist remain fairly hard to counter in PvP. One common complaint is how easily they can shoot through flinch. I literally just saw a video about this yesterday on Twitter. We'll be keeping an eye on these moving forward and have another... So increased flinch on Lawrence Driver and Arbalist. I know Arbalist, I think the aim assist got down, especially on controller. Lawrence Driver probably needs lower aim assist, I think. But the flinch is probably a good thing. Forerunner's ammo economy was fairly conservative when we shipped the 30th anniversary, but having seen it's used in PvP, we believe it would benefit from gaining a little more ammo per special brick. Increased ammo pickup of a special ammo brick from 2 to 3, and from 4 to 5 with a scavenger mod. It's fun to use, but yeah, it was pretty tight on ammo. One more or two more, like one more, that seems reasonable. And we keep going. I knew this was going to be a big twab, but my god. Several legendary weapons have out-of-band stats, either to their benefit, detriment, or a bit of both. <clears throat> when infusion caps were still around, this was okay because they'd cycle out eventually. But now the weapons remain viable. See, this is why Weapon Sunsetting had some benefits. Um, the solution to adjust outliders to be in ban. Hand cannons. The ban for legendary 140 hand cannons aim assist ends at 84. And this extreme should and this extreme should be a hand cannon from a pinnacle activity like a raid or trials, but when 150s were converted to 140s, many of their stats were either too high or too low. So we're adjusting stats of these to be within the standard ranges up or down as follows. Dire Promise is getting more range. Damn, a little less aim assist, but more range. Waking Vigil, six more range. Chat King Queen, I forgot about that weapon. A little more range, less aim assist. Less aim assist on all of those, damn, but more range. Spare Rations, is Spare Rations coming back? See, these two have to be coming back. They aren't even in the game. They are sunset right now. Spare Rations is coming back. Got a feeling. Felwinter's Lies Intrinsic Perk makes it far too consistent and lethal compared to similar shotguns. Uh, plus 15% spread angle. So you won't be able to quite hit that. Oh my god, what happened? You did 25 more? Holy sh... Um, what is happening? Well, thank you. C-Sharp again. 
50 gifted subs in like five minutes. I don't even understand what is happening right now, but I have to put this video up on YouTube, even if it gets four views, because chat is crazy. Go look at the VOD on this one. Damn. Uh, most of Ikelos SMG stats were widely out of band for SMGs, but it does suffer from having a low zoom. Oh man, they nerfed that Ikelos SMG into the ground. Smidge more zoom. Less range, less stability, less handling, less aim assist. Ow. Typically don't adjust based on stats, but they don't do this regularly. Perks. This is going to be an hour long video, but honestly, it'll be worth it for the reaction. Yeah, please send giant thanks to C Sharp in chat. Blow it up. This is, this is crazy. Uh, we want players to be able to choose to build into hip firing more easily. <sighs> just don't put hip fire on a sniper rifle. That just bugs the hell out of me. So we're adjusting the hip fire grip perk to support this. Okay. Now increase damage fall off strat start and in distance by 20%, except shotgun, snipers, and fusions. Okay, that's, I guess, fine. Hip fire grip is just weird anyway. Adagio often felt like it changed a weapon subfamily to the next slowest rate of fire, but worse, particularly when comparing to damage fall off. So they increased the duration from five seconds to seven, increased the damage bonus, except on bows and fusions. Damn, I really like it on bows. From 25% to 30%. Now it adds plus 10 to range. Added a timer to the buff text to make it easier to tell when it's going to expire. That's good, generally. But the damage bonus is a little more for Adagio. It's a little more range, lasts a little longer. That that actually makes sense. Adagio was always like, could be good, but not quite as good. Dual loader just sucks. Is okay on paper, but in practice, the reload is pretty painful. Reduce the reload stat penalty from 50 to 35. Is anybody really just dying to put two like shotgun cartridges in at the same time i'm not danger zone felt pretty risky to use in some cases how about all i do not want anything to explode close to me uh combined with the other scalers this ends up uh let's see reduced self damage scaler for grenade launchers combine this with other scales this ends up reducing self damage from 1.25 to 5.75 to tap the trigger is meta <laughs> we knew this was coming Oh, man, <laughs> I'm not surprised. But yeah, the main ingredient topping the trials charts because it has tapped the trigger from Xur, you know that had to go. So all the people who had Timelines Vertex, they're happier now because that one's probably okay. <laughs> we knew this was coming. It was too too crazy. I used it and I was like, yeah, those shots are this hard to miss. Tap the trigger is meta breaking particular perk on, P on a particular fusion rifle, main ingredient. When stacking with other elements, of this role, it makes fusion rifles much too stable. Oh no. So much so that we stopped putting it on fusion rifles. So then Squid Face sold it a few times. With this change, we believe it's still quite strong perk without being overpowered. So it's likely to appear on future fusion rifles. Oh, they're actually bringing it back. Note, we did try reducing stability from 40 to 20, but in playlists, there, the difference wasn't perceptible. So they reduced the stability bonus from 40 to 10. That hurts. Change the max recoil scaler max recoil angle scale from 0.5 to they almost doubled the recoil angle and the changed error angle from point just a smidge unchanged on all other weapons so yeah they're gonna bring back tap the trigger but it definitely got brought in line timelines king yep head seeker didn't work as intended on aggressive burst pulse rifles head seeker i just don't love but it's not a bad perk because the buff's duration was too short. Sacred Providence was the only viable pulse rifle that benefits from this in Season 16. Although there is such a pulse rifle in the season, it doesn't roll with Headseeker, but expect to see more in future seasons. Extended the buff duration from 0.17 to 0.3 seconds. That is insanely tiny, but I guess it basically makes it to where if the rate of fire, if you go one to the chest, two to the chest, third to the head, in theory that third shot isn't so far away that it doesn't actually get the perk, which makes sense. Uh, let's talk about Eager's Edge. It's a lot of fun to use, but it can be used to do some mind-blowing environmental breaking things. I'm Speedrunners and sword flyers are going to be pissed off once again. While the tuning below isn't meant to remove the fun factor, we have a fresh raid and other fun content coming with the Witch Queen, and we want to ensure to retain, retain the challenge behind our upcoming rewards. They don't want people flying through the entire game with the sword. Kind of makes a little sense. 
Breaking out of maps can be fun indeed, but it can easily remove the prestige and the value of a given item. Reduce the lunge distance benefit while airborne by 25%. Now caps maximum player airborne velocity to a fairly higher value while active. But it is capped. You can't smash into a wall generally. Occasionally we'll shelve perks because they're not working for some reason. Too strong or too weak. There's a few too weak ones. This means we won't put them on weapons in the future unless we change the perk. In many cases, we'd rather put design work into new perks than old ones, but there's a whole perk section here. Anyway, these perks are shelved. Some have been shelved for a while. Bottomless Grief and Celerity. Both were attempts to inject some uniqueness and trials and nightfall weapons, which now we're doing with origin traits, which is fine because neither of those was amazing. Underdog. Never use it. Shield Disorient. Okay. Air Assault. I can't even remember seeing that thing in a while, but it's gone. Yeah, uh, Disruption Break is not bad. Shield Disorient, in theory, I've used it, but I guess it's not one that you literally lean into. The near future. In Season 17, we'll have a set of PvP-focused weapon changes, including new ways for players to build for flinch resistance. That's interesting. Balance tuning for primary weapons, looking at you pulse rifles, lightweights in particular. What's a lightweight pulse rifle? Maybe, hopefully, a good thing. Special weapon tuning. Snapshot feeling mandatory on a sniper in PvP. Other balance changes. Another PvP special ammo economy change if needed. Adjusting how zoom outliers, both high and low, affect the performance of a subset of weapons. The scope column shouldn't be the most important thing on a weapon. This could take various forms, but the intent is to bring both high and low outliers. Picture like a very high zoom SMG, like the multi mock or one other one. If you get the right I think it's scope or barrel for the zoom on like a multi mock. It it puts in some crazy work. So I think that's what that's talking about. And we're adjusting several much requested exotics with legendary what? We're also adjusting several much requested exotics along with legendary perks. Well, I'm excited to see what they do to exotics and some more perk changes. Cheers to proc. That is a, a massive info dump. And you, if you stuck with me halfway through the video, you are the MVP because this is going to be about an hour long. Year of the Tiger, you got some new stuff in the Eververse store. Preparing for launch. To prepare for the launch of Witch Queen on February 22nd, Destiny will undergo scheduled downtime from 7 p.m. on February 21st. So, yeah, 7 p.m. Pacific, which is going to be 10 p.m. Eastern time. You're out of there. As expected. As this swap is running pretty long, we'll do the math for you. 14 hours of downtime. We'll hope you can use the time to get some sleep. I will be sleeping most of that. Prep some tasty food. Do whatever your heart desires. And I will say this. If you're going to play a lot on the first day, have some food prepped. Get a lot of water. Have some real healthy food near you, not a whole bunch of chips and candy. Take a walk occasionally. Stretch your legs every so often. I promise you it is just one day and half of that you could just go walk around and your body will thank you. Do not sit in your chair for 12 hours straight. You got to go to the bathroom. But when you go to the bathroom, walk around. Set an alarm every hour, hour and a half. Walk around. Drink some water. Do a push-up every so often. Move your body. Pl promise you. You'll thank me. Uh, what? Oh, with the end of season approaching, the Shattered Realm season activity has been updated to a daily rotation. Gotcha. Prelude for the Witch Queen is planning to become available on all platforms at 9 p.m. Oh, two hours after servers go down, you should be able to preload. So that gives PlayStation plenty of time to download and copy. That being said, you might want to be up at like midnight to make sure you can actually get that thing downloading. Uh, players who wish to complete Triumph, Seasonal Challenge, and Seals associated with Shattered Realm, get in there. It's on a daily rotation. Should be a little more fun that way. GM catch GM Nightfall catch-up note is also there. This past week, the next week in Destiny login message incorrectly indicated the Grandmaster catch-up note had just become active. The Grandmaster Nightfall catch-up note has been, has been live and is currently available to players who completed it. Okay. Year 4 Content Vaulting. I've told you what's leaving, and if you don't believe me, all the stuff is reading. Go read it. Everything going to the content vault. All the items being deprecated. Weapon cycling. These are all the weapons that you will not be able to get. Following weapons will be leaving the ritual rewards pool with the launch of Witch Queen. Players should make sure to claim all engrams and other rewards. So if you have engrams at a vendor, pick them all up before the start of Witch Queen. Trials. The hand cannon and the sword. Nightfall. The swarm. Shadow price. The Azume and hung jury. Iron Banner, multi mock Time Worn Spire, Guiding Sight, and Steady Hand. All of those are getting pulled from their respective loot pools. We have one more Iron Banner the final week of the season. Play a little Trials, play some Nightfalls, try and get these weapons. I think Azume is already gone, but some of these other ones could be active or the final week. 
Known issues, weapons do not successfully attach to Phoenix Port, that's fine. There's still another known issue that um, Gunsmith can change. That looks like a ridiculous video. Uh, always fun to see cool art. Damn. That is insane. I normally don't click off, but if that either that's I, oh, that's cosplay. Okay. I was like, if that's a picture, that's still amazing cosplay though for Petra. Okay. Well, you've made it. Once again, a mega twab has landed and you've read every word, maybe almost every word, most of them. Um, I know some of you, but between now and lunch, we've made a few more things. We have a few more things to cover in the twabs, but we aren't expecting anything long as this edition. The next few weeks, we have the 10th and the 17th. The game launch is here, so we've got two. Uh, the next, uh, these next weeks will be opportunity to rest up before lunch and get some sleep, eat well, soak in some sunlight, weather permitting. Yeah, it's not in my state. Of course, you get, you're going to maintain a healthy lifestyle, right? I already said this, so yes, make sure. Um, yeah, on a somber note, before we go, we'd like to take a moment to honor one of our moderators. We received tragic news over the weekend that Seraphim Crypto, one of our German community volunteers, passed away. Words are incredibly difficult to find here. Seraphim has been among the Destiny community since the start, pitching in to help anyone who needed assist or simply sitting back and relaxing among our forums to pass the time. We'd met him in person uh, on on his home turf when visiting Germany for Gamescom, and even had him come out to Seattle to help us with a community summit. Every exchange was positive, inspiring, and heartfelt. His love for the community was immeasurable. You could tell with every exchange how wonderful, unique, and a passion he was, and how much of an inspiration he could be, not only to us at Bungie, but players of our worldwide community. Thank you for everything, Seraphim. You are loved, you are missed, and we hope you are able to rest well. We are sending much love to your family. So that is the TWAB and everything that's there. I think I gave my thoughts as we went through it. Weapon crafting does seem like you are going to be spending some time with those weapons. We'll have to get the nuances. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed my reactions from all of the crazy subs from C Sharp 821, thank you. Uh, and everybody out there watching this thing on YouTube, if you enjoyed it, as I said, drop a like, leave a comment if you have thoughts about anything. Podcast is tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. The last word we've got Marco Style coming on. Should be a fun show. Find me on Twitch, Eddie Bontis, Twitter, Eddie Bontis, right here. Hit that subscribe button, hit the alert bell, and I will see you guys in the next one.